Hi, my name is Alex McCann from Zenata Consulting. In this video, we'll be going over Sigless Forms within Zoho Creator. We'll unpack some of the core concepts of Sigless Forms, demonstrate how to set one up, and explore some of its powerful features. By the end, we'll have a hands-on example that should give you a solid grasp of whether Sigless Forms are right for you. Ready to enhance your Zoho Creator expertise? Let's dive in. For this example, we're going to use a stateless form to update our CRM contact record instead of storing the contact record inside of Zoho Creator. In our Zoho Creator application, you can see that I've created a contact form and this contact form has all of the contact details that we will end up pulling from CRM and using to then update the CRM contact record. Below contacts, you could see that there is indeed a report attached to our contact form. And in here, there are two entries, but we do not want to store these entries inside of Zoho Creator. Instead, we would like to just update the contact record in Zoho CRM. In order to create a stateless form that does not have a report attached to it, we will have to click edit this application. And you will actually have to create your stateless form as a regular form that has a report attached to it, and then you'll have to duplicate it. So if I click this plus button here, and I click form, and from scratch, there is no way to check a box to say, I want this to be a stateless form, or please do not store those records into a report. So you will create your form the regular way here, which I have done with this contact form. And you will actually open the form builder for your form that you just created. To associate this particular stateless form to the CRM contact, we will want to add a field here and we could call this CRM contact ID. So now that we've created a stateless form, let's go over the difference in properties between a stateless form and a standard form. So if we hover over the properties icon here and select it, we could see that we now have the ability to add and remove buttons. So the default is submit and reset. In this example, we could just click delete or both of these buttons and we'll add a new button called, we'll rename this and call it update. We also have the ability to enable CAPTCHA and that's pretty much it. So the properties here compared to a standard form are fairly limited. So to briefly compare, if I select properties on the standard form, we could see that we have a odd success message, the ability to send email notifications or direct the user to a link capture the location, IP address, and it looks like you cannot add custom buttons here for a standard form. It enables the user to save a draft and resume editing later, and we're able to assign the record owner based on these drop-down options here. Restrict form entries, restrict form access, restrict form availability, email data, the overall appearance when adding or editing a record. So quite a big difference in properties there, but we'll go back to the contact stateless form that we've created. We'll click done. Now let's compare the difference in a stateless form workflow rules versus a standard form workflow rules. When I click create workflow here, we could see for the standard contact form that we created initially. We have record events created, edited, created or edited, and deleted. So if I select created, we also have field rules, load of form, user inputs, validations on form submission, and successful form submission. If I select our stateless form, we could see that we do not have any record events because the stateless form does not store data. We cannot have a workflow trigger on edit or delete of a particular record. In here, here are our form events, field rules, load of the form, 
user input of a field and click of a button. For this example, we will use field rules, load of the form, and a workflow on click of a button. So we could just go ahead and start with this first field rule here. And we want to hide CRM contact ID. So we will select to hide the CRM contact ID, click save, and we'll click done. And we'll add a new workflow on load form. And we will call this populate CRM contact. We would like to add a workflow here that will pull in the data from our contact record, and so CRM, and populate it into our contact information stateless form that we've created. So I'll click add new action. I actually already have the code typed out, so we will just paste this here. What this does is it will pull in the CRM contact ID. It will get the CRM contact record by the contact ID and it will input the first name, last name, email, phone, and so on based on the CRM contact record data that we're pulling here. The final function that we'll want to add here is going to be on click of a button, on click of the update button, we're going to call this update CRM contact. For this function, we're going to update the CRM contact record, and I have the code here. Click save, done. So we now have our three workflow rules here. One to hide the CRM contact ID on load of the form, one to populate in the CRM contact information, then a final function to update the CRM contact record. If we go back to design here, open up the CRM contact information stateless form. I've actually created a test contact record. We'll want to use this ID here. And if we go back to contact information, now that we have our contact information stateless form in place, we can append that CRM contact ID to the end of our URL here. A question mark followed by our field name equals our CRM contact ID. This contact ID on load of this stateless form will be used to find the contact record in Zoho CRM, pull in those details that we define in our function, and input them into the fields here for us to view, and then update. So I'll click enter. We could see here that the CRM contact was found. I actually want to update some of this information here. So let's say I would like to update the street address line two here. Let's say I'm in suite 210 and not in suite 200. So now I could click update and in doing so, it will actually update our CRM contact record here. So if I click edit, scroll down, we could see that the mailing street two has been updated to suite 210. Let's go ahead and make another change. Let's say my address is 1234 Fake Ave. So I'll click update again and we could check. I actually have to refresh. We could see that the address line one or mailing street in, in Zoho CRM has been updated. To add on to our example, you may have noticed that this URL is for the internal user only. So let's grab this here in contact ID. Let's say we want to make that a public form. So we'll click settings, publish. We'll publish our contact information form here. And now we have a public link that we can use. So I'll paste that there. We'll copy this. And here's our public link. 
And at the end, we have our CRM contact ID. We could email this link out to the CRM contact, allow them to update their contact information through this public link here. So we could click enter. As you can see, they now have a form where they can go in and update their contact information if they need to. So that is just one example of using a Zoho Creator stateless form to update a Zoho CRM module entry. As you can imagine, you're not just limited to updating Zoho CRM records. You can update any third-party application that you may have or perform any type of function that you're able to write using a Deleuze script and on click of a button. We just covered stateless forms in Zoho Creator. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more Zoho Insights. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Thank you and catch you next time.